Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and today we're going to be talking about the simple fact that men should never get reason, uh, never get married. Reason number seventeen thousand three hundred and forty-two. Uh, um, a guy now has to pay his ex-wife more money twenty years after their divorce. And I'll set up the premise here, and then we'll talk about a few things, and then we'll get to the main video. Imagine you're married. You get married when you're like a college student, or you don't have much money. You guys stay together for a few years, you get divorced. You go your separate ways. A little while later, you come into a lot of money. and But this is, you know, long, long after you've already been divorced. And your ex has no money, and her life isn't going so well. So she goes to the courts, in I think this is in England, and says, I want money, and he's rich now, and I deserve it. And 20 years after your divorce, because you now have money, she gets a payout. Sound fair? I would think not. So we're going to talk about that story, which is absolute crap. Uh, and I just did a video a few months ago. I think this was also in the UK, although I don't remember. It could be Australia. I mean, a lot of these places are going crazy with their divorce laws, where a guy uh, never lived with a woman, never had a kid with a woman, never married a woman, but because they dated several years, well, he had to give her alimony. And this is when you don't live together, you're not married, you know, and you don't have, you have separate addresses. It's supposed to be not long-term cohabitation when you're not cohabitating. So something, I'm telling you guys, if you think that you found the woman that somehow is worth it, good luck on you because the courts can come bite you 20 years later. I'm, I'm just telling you it's not worth it. I'd like to thank a viewer over on my locals, uh, my betterbachelor.locals.com uh, page. We have about 13,000 members over there, and uh, one of them is a gal who has done this awesome fan art of me, and I wanted to post this up here to say thank you very much to her. And uh, for the rest of you guys, look, um, I know you guys haven't uh, joined necessarily joined me over on Locals. We've got about 13,000 people there now. Uh, but for those of you that are supporting me over there, for those of you that have supported me down with, either with Bitcoin or PayPal and my links below, I want to thank you guys for this because it means I can go sponsorship free. I don't have to do a plug for ExpressVPN or one of the other billions that seems that all the YouTubers are advertising. So I want to thank you guys for your donations, your support, and things like that. And I'd like to thank uh, this gal. I didn't get the okay to, to share her name, so I don't want to say anything. But she's over on, on uh, my support page, along with many other people. And, um, I, yeah, I just wanted to put this up here because I think she captures me very well, just a lot less wrinkles and a lot less sarcasm in the photo. But other than that, I think this is great art. I think it's beautiful, and I wanted to thank her for it. Um, guys, over in the forums, uh, they're, they're just us guys and some women that have sons and, and husbands and boyfriends. They want to know how to support. They, they want to be part of the community. It's a very supportive place. We share videos. We share memes. We share stories. We share news. We share recipes. We share music. It's a great place just to come hang out. It's like a really good community we have over there. So please come on over and join if you'd like to get off Facebook and Twitter and all these other places, but still have a place to talk with like-minded people. Um, I wanted to, here's another video that I wanted to show, and this is from a, a talk that I think was given quite a few years ago. I'm not sure. It's a little gem that I found out, uh, I found somewhere. I don't even know if this was on Locals or if this was on 9gag or something. But here's a guy that's giving a description of all women's needs versus all men's needs. And this isn't like a, this isn't a guy going his own way. This isn't like a, 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 manosphere content creator this is just a guy getting ready to give a speech let's give a listen it's about a minute long this is a little thing i saw about about romance and it says uh, how to win your spouse and it says and this is kind of a little help y'all understand how to be romantic to your spouse's language it says how to how to win your wife okay how to, how to be romantic to your wife dine her call her hug her support her hold her surprise her compliment her smile at her listen to her laugh with her Cry with her, romance her, believe in her, cuddle with her, shop with her, give her jewelry, buy her flowers, hold her hand, write love letters to her, go to the end of the earth and back for her again. <laughs> Here's how to win your husband. Show up naked and bring food. <laughs> and the food is optional. 
I thought you guys get a kick out of that. You know something's true, and then everybody in the audience laughs and kind of claps along. Uh, women that need everything, men need very, very, very little. Uh, like I've always said, uh, full belly, empty balls, happy man. That's all it takes. Um, ladies, it is time for a loss for the ladies, guys. I, I, Here's the thing, right? Us guys in the manosphere, we feel like sometimes we're on the outside of society and we don't fit in and sometimes we're pushed under the rug and we're not appreciated. Well, it's going to happen to the women too. Leftism consumes all that comes uh, that that it that it comes for. So the NIH, the National in- National Institute of Health, uh, refuses to say women now and refers to them as pregnant and lactating people. That's right. You're no longer a woman or mother in the National Institute of Health. You're now a pregnant and or lactating person, as well as this one uh, from the Washington Examiner. In an effort to be a, a transitioning person friendly. A hospital is advising nurses to no longer use the words such as breastfeeding and breast milk. Instead, human milk and chest milk are the more acceptable terms for midwives to use. (sighs) Welcome to 2021, everybody. You know, I'm telling you, first they'll come for the men, mostly the Caucasian men. Then they'll come for all men. Then they'll come for Caucasian women. Then they'll come. It's just going to, they're just going to eat its own. I'm telling you some crazy times are coming. And if you fight back on this stuff, you're some sort of ism or ist or one of the other bad words that they have out there for you. So I'm telling you, good times are coming. Um, okay, this is a gal. I wanted to, you know, oftentimes we guys say, hey, women can't cook. Women cannot cook. I'll play the video. Let me play the video while I talk here. I'll mute it since you don't need, you need to hear what she's doing. Uh, we say women can't cook. Well, here's a maybe a late 30, early 40-somethings woman who is dumping a bag of Cheetos into boiling water. They're spicy jalapeno Cheetos. and I, I don't know. She looks late 30s, early 40s to me. And now she's taking mac and cheese like the instant box mac and cheese that you use as a college student when you have no money. And she's stirring it up in a boiling pot to make some cheesy Cheeto goop. And in the meantime, she's she's boiling the, the macaroni and she pours, pours the cheese sauce in there. She dumps out the macaroni and cheese and then she adds this Cheetos goop. So basically, it's college boxed macaroni and cheese with the powdered, you know, cheese and macaroni. Now, all of us guys know how to make that. Everybody knows how to make that. If you own a microwave hot, and you know how to heat water and you can pour pop powder into on top of like mac and cheese or or on top of noodles. The only twist she's done is added spicy hot, like flaming hot Doritos to it. And if you were to listen to her talking, she's talking like she's a a chef. Like, oh, this is how I do this and try this. Isn't this, if if you're going to tell me that this is one of the things I'm missing out on by being in a relationship with a modern woman, forget it. Like I can close my eyes and just throw ingredients against a wall and make something healthier and more tasty than this. So ladies, if this is the cooking you're saying you're gonna bring to the table for your man, that'll be a hard hard no from me. All right, our main story. Um, Ecotricity founder calls for a time limit on divorce payout claims. Now, this article is more than four years old, says at the banner, but this is the first I've seen of it. And we know things are getting worse today than they were four years ago. But nonetheless, it was a new story to me. And I said, hey, maybe it's a new story to you guys. So I do want to read it. Uh, Dale Vince agrees to pay ex-wife Kathleen Wyatt 300,000 pounds, which is what $400,000, $375,000 US, after she lodged a 1.9 million pound claim more than 20 years after this divorce. So she wanted almost 2 million pounds and he still had to settle for 300,000 pounds 20 years after their divorce. I'm telling you, it's almost like when things end, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a date, whether it's marriage, whether it's kids, like you always have this specter of the courts and the governments hovering, hovering around that they may come back after you at some point should they ever change their minds. I'm telling you, man, that... that that just looms over you like the sword of Damocles. Like if you, if when things are over, they're never over. So uh, they, they say here, the green energy tycoon Dale Vince has called for a time limit on divorce cash claims after agreeing to pay his ex-wife 300,000 pounds in a financial settlement. 
Kathleen Wyatt initially sought 1.9 million pounds from the founder of Ecotricity and a claim lodged more than 25 years after the couple separated and nearly 20 years since their divorce. There should be a payout date, a finishing payout date on the day of the divorce. Why are we going back and looking into this guy's wallet in his successes for 20 years after the divorce and deciding she gets to have more money. They divorced when he had no money. She she was in it when he had no money. She had nothing to do with him making his money because otherwise that would have been in the settlement originally. Why are they just going back and going, you know, you know something, this guy's been successful since the divorce. Just give her some because she's struggling. If this is where we are in society, for I mean, forget about it. Divorce is bad enough because you're always already going to lose your shirt. But you guys saying, well, what about uh, a um, what about a, a prenup? Prenups are no good anymore. They they're now making a guy pay money long after they went their separate ways and divorced, and he made the money after, and he's still having to give it up. It just don't guys. If you're really still considering about. Marriage, like what do we have to do as a society and the laws to make you go, you know something, I'm out, forget it. This is too much. At what point do you say no? Because I, you know, not to harsh on some of you guys, but some of you guys are still like, oh, I, I really would like a wife and kids. Like, I get it. I get it. There's lots of guys that would like a wife and kids, but maybe it's time to let that notion go. The laws are not built to help you in any way. They're specifically designed to hurt you. They say uh, Vince is a former New Age traveler who became a millionaire businessman long after the couple parted. There was a legal battle, battle over whether her claim could proceed, which Wyatt later won in the Supreme Court. Vince described it as a mad decision. It went up to a Supreme Court of the land, or of the area. I don't know if it was the... Uh, of, of what jurisdiction, but it went to a Supreme Court and they said, yeah, you can go ahead and, and try to get more money from him. We'll hear the case. Uh, the High Court family judge, Mr. Justice Cobb, sitting in London, approved the pair's decision to settle with the modest award to Wyatt and said it represented a realistic and balanced appraisal of the unusual circumstances of this case. What's unusual about it? And what's realistic and balanced about them getting divorced when he has no money? He makes a lot of money as a single man, and she comes swooping back around for a second pass. That's fair and balanced and unusual circumstance just because he became amazingly successful? What? All you're doing is punishing this guy. They say how much Wyatt will actually receive remains uncertain because of outstanding legal bills, which have yet fully to be quantified. Neither Wyatt, 55, of Monmouth, nor Vince, 53, of Stroud, uh, Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, were in court for the announcement. Vince later said the case has been a terrible waste of time and money, and the settlement barely covered Wyatt's legal fees. So basically... I'd like to say a lot of really bad words to this woman. But basically, she was stupid enough to go get an attorney to go after this guy. They did win, but now this guy's not paying really anything to her. It's going all to her attorney. Bravo, ma'am. Great job. So now you still end up with almost nothing. You basically made a rich guy pay out your attorney. Brilliant. Great job, legal system. Uh, He wanted to add, I'm disappointed that the Supreme Court decided to not throw out the case, given it was brought over 30 years since the relationship ended. There clearly needs to be a statute of limitations for divorce divorce cases, a time limit beyond which a claim cannot be made. Such a thing exists in commercial law for good practical reasons. The couple met as students, married in 1981 when they were in their early 20s, and lived a new age traveler lifestyle. They separated in the mid-80s and divorced in 1992. In the mid-90s, okay, so they're divorced in 92. So in the mid-90s, Vince began a business career and went on to become a green energy tycoon when he launched uh, Ecotricity or 
ecotricity, I don't know how they, ecotricity, which is worth at least 57 million pounds. So they, divo- they, they separated in the mid 80s. So they went their separate ways. They finally get divorced in 92 and in mid 90s, which we'll say even if it's 94, 95, 96, they'd already been divorced for two or three years. That's when he launched the business that became worth 57 million. Did she come sniffing around then? No. Did she sniff around a few years later? No. Did she sniff around when things got rough and she sees her ex as as maybe the business worth 50 plus million pounds? Yes. How convenient. One of the worst deals ever made of any kind signed by anybody. How convenient. Yes, I'm telling you marriage is a raw deal. Uh, The Supreme Court uh, Justice Lord Wilson said Wyatt's claim was legally recognizable and not an abusive process. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. Shocking. Shocking that, yeah, it's legally recognizable. It's not an abusive process to make a guy pay out money that he made after a divorce 20 some odd years later. If this is your court system and you tell me, fellas, you still think about divorce, you want to get divorced, or even if you're going to go, I'm going to go to another country and I'm going to get married and I'll live in Malaysia. Who says the laws won't be changed there in 20 years? Who says that that now you could get divorced and in 20 years they don't come on to the same woke train and you get sucked into this? You, you can't predict the future, but if this is where we're going now... And they're going all the way back to a divorce at 92, that which is almost 30 years later. You're going to tell me that you're going to be safe in 30 years? Right. Uh, Wilson described Vince as a remarkable man who was a traveler with no money in his 20s. But one year at the Glastonbury Festival, he rigged up a contraption from which he provided wind-powered telephone service. It was the start of a business which, as a result of its ingenuity and drive, has led his to his manufacture and sale of green energy on a massive scale. Vince lives with his second wife in a Georgian fort. Well, it sounds like he's doing pretty well if he's living in a Georgian fort. But this woman, this woman, because and, and uh, somewhere in here, I might have read it and I wasn't paying attention, but basically uh, somewhere in this, or maybe it was another article that I read that was similar, uh, this woman had fallen on hard times. She'd fallen on hard times, and so they felt sorry for her, and they decided to give her a payout. You know something? I, maybe I'm a horrible human b- b- being for saying this. I hope that attorney takes every dime and she gets nothing. Maybe I'm a bad person for saying that. But if she's going to swoop around almost 30 years after your divorce and try to come in for money and the court system sides with her, I hope that attorney takes every penny and she gets nothing but heartburn and heartache for her time. And I feel bad for the guy because now granted, obviously he's doing pretty well for himself, but just to have to give out 300 million pounds just because the court system says, I hope the attorneys get rich off this. I hope she doesn't get a dime. And I feel sorry for this guy that that this is the way things are. But guys, I, I'm going to tell you, I do lots of videos of these stories and these stories aren't meant to, I mean, they're meant to be entertaining. They're meant to to show you how bad the laws are against men. And they're meant to show you they're, they're, that even if you think you're safe from 20 and 30 years ago from a divorce, they can come back for you. And, and maybe this isn't the same in all countries, but who's to say this this woke brigade doesn't go through and change the laws 20 years from now, 30 years from now. So if you got divorced this year in 2022... That in 2052, an ex doesn't come sniffing around for your wallet. I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you, you cannot get married in today's society. All right, now it is time for today's uh, dating profile, or the blah, 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 blah. It's time for the dating profile of the day. All right, the first one here, uh, this gal is um, uh, in a, a, a metropolis setting. She's she's relatively petite. Um, I blurred the face, but she wasn't too bad looking. I'd say she's at least average. She says, all photos are recent. My age is wrong here. I can't change it. What's her age? 41. What's her real age? We have no idea. Why, they, why do they put in fake ages? Why? I have no idea. 
I don't know if, if maybe she was at one point 42 and she decided to make it so it was 39. So she'd get in on a, on a couple extra swipes here and there with some younger guys. And then it went to 40, and she tried to change it back to 39, and she couldn't. And so now she's stuck with a fake age that's younger, but it's now 41. Maybe she's really 43. I don't know. Single and never married. You'll have to be brilliant to match with me. All righty. Uh, you have to be brilliant to match with me. I like, uh, I like decent guy with a good education and manner. So generally speak Engl- or generally English gentleman... I don't think English is the first language, so let me try this again because I start reading along as if it's going to be in English and then I get thrown off. Single and never married, you'll have to be brilliant to match me. I like decent guy with good education and manner, so generally English gentleman suits me very well, but others are fine too if we match. Looking for a lockdown partner or someone to delete this app together. Not interested in a one night stand or casual dates. Okay. I know I'm so, I'm hot. Sorry. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me. But I can't help it that I'm popular. Okay, I know I'm hot. I'm sorry. Right. London I, I bet she's I very bet she sounds like an incredibly humble woman, doesn't she? London bases only, please. I received 30,000 likes here, but he still didn't show up. Where are you? So I guess she's matched with 30,000 likes, or maybe she's on her Instagram has 30,000 likes, or maybe she just is saying, I get a ton of likes. Um, But I guess a guy ghosted on her. Where are you? Uh, Maybe he talked to you a little bit and didn't dig your attitude, and he decided to ghost on you. But good luck to you. Um, I wish you all the best with all your hotness. And our second and last profile of the day, this gal is 33. She says, my name is blank. I took that out. I'm tattooed, pretty eyed, and thick thighed. And I have a dog named Kevin. 100% real, not a cam girl. Not looking for fans or Instagram followers. Not looking for a sugar daddy or someone to bankroll my dog's extravagant life. LOL. 100% independent and financially stable. Rare. I know. Now here's the thing. I really don't have any problems with this profile. What's interesting is at the end, she says, rare, I know. Women know that other women are out there looking for the money guys, looking for somebody to bankroll them, looking for somebody to uh, that are just into Instagram followers or only, land, only fan followers or cam whatever. Like other women know this to the point that this 33 year old gal is putting on there, hey, I'm not any of any of these things. It's rare, isn't it? And most of the guys sitting here go, yeah, most time only, the only people I ever match with or actually talk to are either scammers or bots or somebody that's you know promoting their only fans or something like that. Guys again, if you're on dating, if you're on a dating app, you're just wasting your time, you're validating women and wasting your time. Uh, Guys, um, you know, our takeaway from today, look, there's so many reasons why you can't get married anymore. There's, there's just, just forget about it. Just, if you want to date and and you want to live at a separate address than your girl, if you want to uh, keep things relatively casual, even if you want to get serious, but you keep your own place, she keeps hers, it's not long distance, you have your rule set, at least make it to maybe you'll get your heart broken. Maybe you will. Maybe if you want to fall in love and do that and you end up getting cheated on or hurt or something bad happens, you can recover from a broken heart. It kind of sucks, but you can recover. You can't recover from ha- losing half your crap when you're 50 years old or whenever it is that she decides you're, she's done with you and you have to start over. You know, if you're 25 or 30 and she leaves you, you're not losing that much. But look at this guy. He is now losing, 30 years later, while he's 53 years old, he's now losing 300,000 pounds from a divorce that happened when he was like mid or late 20s, maybe early 30s. Guys, it's always going to sneak up and bite you on the backside, so don't do it. Guys, if you'd like to support my work, links are below as always. If you have, again, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And the best way you can support me is like, comment, share, subscribe. Join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Guys, that's it for me. Stay safe, stay strong, stay smart, and do not get married. 